Yes, yeah, surprise, surprise, FC25 career mode might just be cooked already. They do this every year. I can already see the EA fanboys typing away their hate comments right now, so let me divulge into what EA Sports and the Game Changers don't want you to hear. After all the rant videos and feedback given to EA over the course of the FC24 game cycle, did they listen to us? Let's find out. Today, the FC25 career mode deep dive trailer has dropped, so we're gonna break it all down piece by piece and uncover what's really new to the game. Dodge our way past the BS and the marketing speed don't worry, this is a glaze-free zone. I won't be sugarcoating anything. Wake up. I said wake the fuck up. Sleepy time's over, little motherfucker. Let's go. So much for a deep dive. This thing barely hits four and a half minutes. We're going to tap in not just to the trailer, but for the detailed pitch notes. I've also got some Twitter and Reddit leaks came through from the beta, so you know today's going to be juicy, baby. Well, they saved the best to last, the career deep dive player and manager career get their time in the spotlight today. And of course, there are a few new categories to cover, like live start points, player career with icons, and women finally getting their own personal career mode. Why Why are there Liverpool fans in the war? What the hell was going on back there? Couple things here went past the quality reassurance team. Some poor bloke stuck in the Anfield brick wall. We get a little look at a POV camera, which I hope like you can play the game in like a POV first person mode. It'd just be a waste if it was only for replays, but we've got the same old new manager cutscenes that happens when you start a new save. We've got the live start points, which will be interesting later towards the end of the game cycle, I guess, or midway through the season. Manager career is what we all came for, realistically. We've got the FCIQ with the new tactics. I'm not sold on it yet. It's kind of a thing I have to get my hands on first and experiment with before I can give a proper verdict on it, if you know what I mean. We've got staffing, scouting, training, coaching. We've got a new look at the little uh, squad hub, transfer hub menus. We've got new and improved press conferences, which we'll see if they really do make an impact or if the questions are really that different. Looks like there are different answering options to how you can actually impact a player and their morale. But we've got the scouting here which I just want to pause on because for some reason we can't scout in Africa anymore. Like what's up with that? South America, North America, Europe, Asia and Oceania. But for some reason Africa you just isn't an option. Rush Youth Academy tournaments. I don't know if I'm sold on this yet. It's a cool concept, a nice idea, but like I'm training them up to be playing in 11 versus 11, like a proper football match, not for rush tournaments. Anyway, got a new look at the Youth Academy where you can now scout players or have players in your academy that are 14. I wonder if that's really changed up, like if you can promote them when they're 15 or do you still have to wait when they turn 16 to actually promote them to the senior team? We've got new sliders, some new settings to customize. I'm sure if you ask, player career mode fans what their main priorities were and features they wanted added. Icons probably weren't up there on the to-do list, but here we are, I guess. It's been possible on PC for the last five years. It looks like we've got the same old transfer signing cutscenes of you doing the medical. No changes there with you on the bike and holding up the jersey. It's still the same old from FIFA 23. We've got player career mode storylines, which is interesting, but how much would it actually play a part and impact your, your experience, I guess? And this is an Another thing where it's just probably going to be cosmetic only, social media. I mean, women's career mode, women's football. It's great to have it added there and an option in the game, but we could barely get men's career mode right. So I don't know if adding women's was the best idea, but I guess a lot of people were happy about it. I probably won't really touch it that much, only for experimental purposes, I guess. But I know a lot of people are happy that women finally get their own career mode, so good on them. Good for them. As you can see, this like player career mode menu, the new layouts, the new to-do list or track list as they've caught it here in your central hub. I don't know, these new menus, uh, yeah, I'm a bit iffy about them. It's going to take a while to get used to it. it. looks like we're saying goodbye to the old school news tiles that have been in the game since like FIFA 14. And we've got this new like social media news feed with Fabrizio Romano, the athletic announcing transfers, new stories breaking from there. Oh my god, it's over. Pack it up, guys. Pepe signed for Arsenal. It looks like the same old CPU transfer logic is going to be added again. And boy, I can't wait for the same five scripted transfers. 
transfers to happen every window. And then we've got the same old bus celebration or the bus ceremony. Touring throughout the city once you've won some silverware. I don't really know what Nuri Sahin and the boys are celebrating on the bus because there are no trophies and it looks like we've got the women's Ballon d'Or in Karimo. So we're going to end it off there after just crossing over the four minute mark. Now I've been seeing a lot of love and hype for these features and rightfully so. This deep dive alone blows FC24 and FIFA 23s out the water. However, you've got to be cautious when it comes to EA. We know who we're dealing with. Don't set your expectations too high. Take it with a grain of salt. Don't worry, I'm here to tell you guys the truth in a world full of lies. Now, just because I'm feeling nice today, let's start off with the good. The Karimo trailer already has more views than the Ultimate Team one does, and it's only been 11 hours. Karimo just remains undefeated. You love to see it. The pitch notes that they posted cover pretty much everything, so there's not going to be any other hidden features that somehow arise. This is the full list. Now, live start points is a concept that I would automatically have in the W column. Honestly, I did not expect EA to implement something like this into career mode, yet they've somehow pulled it off. However, there's a big asterisk in front of that W because it's going to be released with a post-launch update. So who knows how many weeks after launch? Are we talking a month? Are we talking two weeks? Or are we talking like three months into the season? That's the only thing that's worrying me about these live start points where you can basically jump into any game week across the 24-25 season. It's something that's going to be updated throughout the game cycle, which finally we get something that we can look forward to in career mode. New updates and new challenges to play as you hop in and you get all the injuries, all the stats, all the standings of not only your team, but the entire competition. You're going to have all the results and all the form that carries on over. So if a team's struggling in real life and you think you can get them out of their relegation battle, you can hop in and start a new save. Or if there are some overachievers like a Girona from last season, for example. However, there's also a little asterisk about live star points because it's only for 10 leagues and 12 cup competitions. So not every league is going to have this luxury. I don't know if you're a fan of the lower leagues or like just a, an exotic league that's not in the top 10, you're not going to get this feature really. It's only going to apply to the big boys for now. Each live start point will reflect the current points totals, goals scored, transfers, cup progress, injuries, suspensions, and potential points deductions. Okay, again, like I said, it would be a W. However, post launch update and not all leagues covered kind of has me feeling a bit icky. We'll be kicking off live start points and snapshots later in 2024. So a certain game week throughout the season and it gives you like all these periods like a week by week basis basically. And it's also available in player career. I think this definitely helps the replay value of the game and just the end of the season. That kind of last couple of months where career mode's getting boring. To be honest, I think it's a brilliant idea if executed correctly. And something else that is only a slight quality of life update but is a major W in my book and that is all the new customization options and settings we're getting. So basically you can change between gameplay types so you can have simulation or realistic football turned on for you and the rest of the CPU AI. You can have wind effects and weather effects on the pitch and toggle them off and on as you please. You can also control AI behavior but other areas that you can control is like training, transfers and scouting. You can remove scouting from the game like the good old days and just know everyone's overalls and attributes, adjust player development, have tra creating a transfer embargo. They've pretty much added a difficulty level without adding a difficulty level, but making you have more control over it. So which segments of your career mode you want to control, like transfer negotiations or board expectations. Another big W is that they can be modified mid-save and do not require you to start a new career. So you can toggle and experiment with these things throughout your simulation. That's what I love though, just giving power back to the player. So again, another tick in Sir BCHD's book because other game titles like AEA's Madden and NBA 2K already do this kind of stuff. Honestly, I think there are a few things missing, but this is a good start. Your training settings where you have training plan, you can turn training plans on or off. You could modify the training plan recovery rates, train plan availability, playing training drills. You can just turn that off and make it all simulated. Okay, the more I look into this feature, the more I like it. Finally, we're getting the customization and love we deserve in the youth academy match settings you can change obviously the difficulty level the half length i'm not sure if there are any like rewards or xp bonuses you get depending on what difficulty you play on but there you go your youth player quality could be at full potential or play them at their current ability and then the transfer settings all right here we've got your transfer embargo you can ban yourself for like 10 11 seasons however long you want to make sure you're not tempted to sign anyone i just think that's a cool little 
fun feature to do. You can turn scouting on or off, training plans on or off. You can give yourself a financial takeover mid-season or mid-save. Unlike in previous years where you had to decide upon startup, you get given that freedom and then the board expectations, you can basically make it really, really hard or very lenient where you don't get the sack. I mean, you could do that in like FIFA 10, FIFA 11, but they've brought it back. And when it comes to the Youth Academy improvements, this rush tournament, again, it's kind of a bit of good with the bad because I wanted like a full 11 v 11 youth academy type system where they had their own leagues they had their own standings but you know baby steps here people it's EA at the end of the day we're talking about it's probably going to be a feature in next year's or FC 27 but I just hate this like forced rush integration like just get out why do I have to play like a 5v5 tournament when I'm, I'm not training them I'm not wanting them to play in a 5v5 rush that's not real world football I'm training them to be like proper football players nevertheless a cool little feature that you can do is play with your youth talents at full potential so if this guy Maximov has a potential of 94 you could play with him whilst he's 94 overall and see how he feels it's missing like a practice arena why can't I choose specific players to just free roam with and see how they control on the ball rather than playing these silly little 5v5 rush tournaments that EA have decided to just rebrand Volta and spread it into every game mode you can't avoid it it's a key selling point and now we're just forced to live with it even though nobody asked for this in career mode we want proper 11v11 practice matches back where we can actually put like our backup teams, our second squads, our academies and let them face each other in like intra-club friendlies like you can do in Football Manager like, like you're under 21s versus a senior squad but no you're forced to play on a smaller pitch in these 5v5 scenarios which these youth academy players are never going to play in once they get promoted to the senior team. So again, it's kind of like we have to take the good with the bad. Because finally, after all these years, EA have expanded the youth academy pool. You can now scout in over 160 countries, which again, is good. That's a W. I mean, you could already do that with PC mods like five years ago. But hey, the console gang are finally catching up. You got to give it up to them. They finally got around to it. All right, take back whatever I said earlier about not being able to scout in Africa because I found some screenshots and there we have it. Africa is scoutable, just not every country in the continent. All right, they have redeemed themselves. I'll take I'll hold myself accountable after that. But yeah, the range and number of countries to scout in is absolutely insane. Granted, again, should have been a feature in like FIFA 15, but we'll take it. You might as well just gone the whole nine yards and made all the FIFA ranked nations actually scoutable. I'm pretty sure there's like 210 or just over 200. So they've got got about 50 new nations to add back in for FC 26. Another small W when it comes to the Youth Academy is that you can have players in your academy that are as minimum of 14 years of age. Now, I've said it before and I'll say it again. This has been possible on PC with mods for like four or five years now. Anyways, I'll give that a small to medium thumbs up. I hope they've changed the promotion age once you can get them into your senior squad now that we've seen the likes of Endrick and Lamina Mao be literally teenagers playing with a senior squad. And your youth academy players, gone of the days of seeing a bold man with a beard pop up and be 15 years old. Apparently now, players will look younger and you'll be able to see them physically grow during their development. So I hope that's not just like, they start off young and then they eventually grow a beard or have a different hairstyle. I hope that's for like their weight and their height. Seeing them grow from five foot five to six foot or something like that, I don't know. Like, I just hope it's more in depth than what they're actually preaching. And I hope it's not just cosmetic but it's another thing I have to kind of get my hands on and test out experiment for you guys how youth players look five ten years down the track when they start to retire is the difference actually that noticeable or is it gonna be broken so fingers crossed this actually could be a game changer for the youth Academy scene now, I'll reiterate that should have been in the game like years ago five six years ago when they switched on over to frostbite because now at least we know it's been possible this entire time and then I guess we can kind of end off the good segment with a little bit of social social media integration, a few cosmetic changes and aesthetic adjustments in the menus. Obviously, we've got a new main menu overlay, which is kind of just a copy and paste of the ultimate team new menu from FC24. And it looks like we no longer have the news tab. It's just this social media hub, this social media little feed that pops up on the right and you can scroll through whether the Athletic writes an article or Fabrizio Romano's announcing a transfer. Look, it's taken them, what, four or five years? No, longer. It's 
taken them since FIFA 17 to introduce a feature that was back in the journey. And not only like a social media news feed, but you had your own profile. Anyway, I've covered it before on the channel. Do I really have to sit here and give them a clap? Give them a pat on the back with something that's already been in the game since like FIFA 17. Like, it, it's just such a nothing burger. Here are some more screenshots of what FC 25 social media integration in career mode looks like when you buy a new player, when a new signing comes to the club. So there's a few new GIFs and animations in the menus. The only good thing about this social media integration is that you can see comments from like random fans. You can see real life haters in career mode now. Theo Dalman coming through, not seeing the big moves we were promised. I just know you're going to see that one critical fan, no matter what you do, no matter who you sign, they're going to be in the comments straight away. They're going to be in your replies, sending you hate. I'm not looking forward to that whatsoever. Now let's get down and dirty with the bad and downright ugly of this FC25 career mode reveal. First off, bringing back the pre-match intros and like the player lineups walking out the tunnel, that, that isn't a new feature. You can now opt in and out of having them on or off, but I'm not giving them any extra points. If anything, it just shows how incompetent they are. They should have just made this happen in FC24 when they decided to remove it. Or after all the backlash and feedback that they got, they should have, you know, implemented it in a patch like halfway throughout the year. But instead, they decided to see all the hate, see all the feedback, and hold on to it for next year's installment. Knowing that it was like a critical element to the career mode experience, they held back and now they're using it as another marketing point. Saved it for FC25's launch, so it seems like they've added more than they actually have. There are a few areas that I'm not really convinced on whatsoever. Based off stuff that I've heard, this new FC IQ that again was plastered throughout the entire game. And of course, it impacts career mode the most with new tactics, new player roles. We get a new look at it here with this new graphic kind of mapping out your team and what they're gonna do but I don't know apparently this doesn't really have the desired impact or as much of an impact as they're claiming to be. I don't know I've heard a few things that it's not that much of a game changing feature it's not really a groundbreaking as they're promoting. Yeah it's something I'm not a thousand percent convinced on. Development plans have just low-key stayed the same with it pretty much just like adjusting to the FC IQ player roles. Something you'd expect considering development plans haven't been changed or hadn't been tweaked since FIFA 21, since their inception. I don't know, the Squad Hub new menu system, I don't know, it's gotta grow on me. I don't know why the player like goes behind the menu there, like it just looks kind of weird. It, it's just, uh, like why are they covered by a piece of the menu? You can now use the GTN and youth scouting to tinker towards player roles for your team, but to be honest, when was the last time you used the global transfer network? I'm pretty sure everyone's gonna turn that off as soon as they enter a new save. I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of these new main menus like it kind of just looks lifeless and weird with this dull black background like it just looks soulless it doesn't look colorful and vibrant like a la fifa 15 fifa 14 on next gen like give it some color give it some vibrance it just looks like you're just staring at a black wall more leaked screenshots of the main menu of the new look main menu again looking dark and colorless it's just a personal preference for me uh, they could have done better why does it have to always look like the ultimate team menu. Why do we always have to bend to their will? Oh my god, I've just noticed this. Your team actually doesn't come up in the team management section when you like hover over it with the player names, the kits. You'll actually have to click into it to actually see your whole entire team. So that's kind of annoying. Anyways, we've still got the league specific overlays and I swear if Serie A doesn't have its own league overlay and color scheme, you'll hear about it. Now we transition to one of the most underloved segments of the career mode community and that's the player career career mode fans shown the least love over the years and now they have added a feature which was possible on PC ever since FIFA 19 and FIFA 18. You can start a player career with icons. They've not only tried to make this a pre-order incentive but there are limited icons on launch like you can only have a selection of like five and then they're either gonna eventually add more throughout the game cycle or you're gonna have to unlock them with like a battle pass system. They're gonna find a way to monetize it. To be honest I think this feature will become redundant once the icon squad file gets released on PC which usually happens around one to two weeks after launch because like I've said we've been able to do this forever we've added icons into the game before and we can do it again don't you worry you'll have the whole icons list to choose from not just to select four or five that EA want to drip feed into the game and hold back I guess it's a step in the right direction but why can't we add them to manager career or why can't we play in different eras like in NBA 2k you can play in the 80s play in the 90s What's the point of bringing back 
Beckham and Zidane and Henri into the modern era. Anyway, kind of redundant, kind of irrelevant considering we could already do this on PC. So once you enter player career mode, you have the choice of selecting or creating a new men's player, creating a new women's player, playing as a real player, or selecting an icon, which seems to be the brand new shiny feature. But again, like I've said, PC Master Race, we've been there, done that. Seems like on launch, we'll have the option between Beckham, Zidane, and R9 Ronaldo. Okay, you've got a little bit of a Galacticos vibe going on. And this is what it looks like when you start a new icon player career. You get the main menu where you can greet your teammates. You can review your objectives, which could be broken again. The player agent feature seems not to have changed whatsoever. And then you've got your little signing photo, your little transfer announcement that'll pop up on the right hand side and where you can scroll through all the news and transfer activity. I think this tweet just sums it up perfectly. FIFA community, we'd like an online career mode to play with our friends. EA, no. We all like to have David Beckham play on the current Real Madrid team so he can pass the ball to Vinny Jr. Like in all fairness, who asked? These could all just be bells and whistles for player career considering if the player agent feature is still broken and the objectives are as ridiculous as they were in FC24 and haven't been tweaked, it could be yet another frustrating year for player career mode. Another new feature, or let's just say enhanced feature, it's not necessarily new, but there is a brand new and improved avatar creation system for when you're creating a player, which promises to be a more realistic looking avatar with a large variety of new face customization options. Thanks to the introduction of Cranium technology, players are able to sculpt each element of their avatar's face down to every little detail. But no, don't get excited. They still haven't brought back EA Game Face for whatever reason. This is also what's powering the Youth Academy aging system. And when players and regens get generated into your save, this is the technology that's going to sculpt their face and create more realistic looking players that don't actually have Game Face scans. Something I'm looking forward to testing out and experimenting with. You can add face scars, moles, different blemishes. Like, you know, EA is showing it off, like, you know, doing it normally. Having the created player with the presets, with the most realistic looking face. Hopefully the tattoos carry over to the main menu creator player, not just for player career mode and pro clubs. I don't want the same issues we had last year. Right here you can see they're, they're playing it safe. They're using it the way it's intended, not the way that FIFA fans will use it. Based on a few Twitter leaks I've seen, you can create some absolute monstrosities on this game. Because let me tell you right now, you aren't prepared for what you're about to see. Here are some crazy, interesting creations we've seen on the timeline so far. You've got the Carlo Ancelotti look with the eyebrow raise, but taken to a whole new level with the eye just going completely off kilter. You have some interesting face marks or face tattoos you can apply. They're really taking this FC Cranium name to a whole new level. You can reshape your entire skull. And it's looking like you're probably going to see the scariest creatures run out onto the pitch this year. I mean, if you don't laugh, we'll cry. This is what they don't want you to see. The absolute abominations. Looks like you're going out there creating aliens for the new Star Wars show. Oh, wow. That is... <laughs> oh, my God. Nah, man. Nah. <laughs> what is going on? This is either going to be really fun or just really weird. It looks like someone's either punched his face into oblivion or scrunched up his skull. This is nightmare fuel. This is new Halloween costume ideas. Bruh. You can, you can make Megamind clones out here. What is, what is happening? I don't think they know what they've created. Please don't patch this out the game now. I want this to be in at launch. You've got Pinhead over here. You've got, oh my God. You've got the Sigma mogging face you could create. This is unbelievable. I don't think EA were this based, but here you go. Instead of, fa instead of scanning your own face into the game, look forward to seeing some of the most scary player creations, some aliens out here in FC 25. This is like some R-rated stuff right here. This could be its own horror movie. And Cranium doesn't stop there with the Youth Academy. It's looking scary. I don't know. There are some uncanny valley type faces. Some of these Youth Academy faces. God damn, they look strange. Ugh, I'd like it. I'd release them straight away. Frankenstein's lab is working overtime out here. Yeah, these faces are taking me out. The Youth Academy this year is going to be scary. Like that face, this build is going to haunt me in my nightmares. And you probably all know by now, but AC Milan and Inter are both gone from 
the game. They'll both be unlicensed with the badges, with the kits. San Siro's been removed, but I'll cover that in another video. There has also conveniently been no mention of Pro Club's features that are new, whether or not they're making their way into career mode. Like this cool new clubhouse customization in the menu background. They get this cool little customizable locker room menu background. Meanwhile, we just get a plain black wall to stare at, harking back the good old days of the menu customization and depending on what team you took over depended on the aesthetics in the menu. Yes, it's a little change, but definitely makes a difference. And for some reason, isn't in career mode or just create a club career mode. Neither is club facilities, which kind of technically we had back in the day with staff upgrades, but now pro clubs get to throw their hat in the ring and they get their own spin on the OG feature with facilities and facility budgets. Basically, you can go out and hire equipment managers, groundsmen, performance analysis, sports psychologists, you can hire sports scientists, an attacking technical coach, a defensive technical coach, and there are different levels to it, different tiers. Again, a perfect career mode feature that would slot right in, but no, we go another year with pro clubs getting these shiny new features that would fit perfectly into player and manager career, like club facilities, like the locker room menu background, like the trophy room, and career mode fans just kind of have to sit here and wait in the corner and wonder when it's ever going to be our turn. Why do these great ideas have to be mode exclusive? Nevertheless, after all the trailers, all the reveals, all the leaks we've seen so far, I'm going to let you guys make up your own mind, but I wanted to add this little segment in on everything they haven't mentioned or some features that were barely touched on, if not just swept under the rug and unchanged for another year. There were zero mentions of creator club changes or new customization, new kit templates, sponsors, nothing of the sort, not even a mention of creator club. So that again goes unchanged for another year. We still can't create our own kits or import badges and logos, not even fake sponsors or like shirt sponsors. No mention of international management as like FC24, the World Cup is still unlicensed and potentially the Euros trophy and Euros branding won't be in career mode or FC25 whatsoever. And we're going to have less than 30 nations again like last time because they haven't mentioned anything to do with new leagues, new nations, new divisions. Everything stayed the same when it comes to the number of teams and number of leagues in the game. Here's a big one. There has been no mention of player historical stats or player team records. Keeping track of your players' numbers, goals and assists throughout the years. Once you start a new season, once you enter season two, season three, all your previous stats and records get wiped. Like it would be cool to see like another invincible season, like be acknowledged by the game or like goal scoring records in leagues. You guys know what I mean. It's been a highly requested feature that again doesn't see the light of day. And then here we have the big kahuna, the one we know could potentially kill ultimate team. And that is still no online career mode, even though other EA titles like Madden has had this feature in their franchise mode for years now. Online career mode alongside like a custom stadium builder. I call them the big three. Online career mode sits at the top. Stadium creator and kit creator is right up there in the top three of the most highly requested features. But online career mode is what kills me the most because it would combine everything we know and love about career mode with your friends, with randoms. It would legitimately be a game changer. A word of advice for you guys out there. I would just say don't pre-order this game. Just a little warning. Like last year, you can look back at all my content then. The game was broken at launch, especially career mode. Wait for Black Friday or Christmas sales because FC24 went like half price in record time because EA wanted to push their sales for Christmas and show that they didn't need the FIFA name to still have their success. So just wait for some sales periods. Just be patient because you don't want to be playing top dollar and premium prices just so that the game could drop in a buggy, unplayable mess again like last time out. So wait till all the content drops and people like me give you the raw and honest truth about the current state of the game and if the improvements are actually good or not, if there are good reasons to actually pay full price and give you the raw and honest truth about FC25, the good, the bad, the ugly. We're getting post-launch content this year for career mode, so it's even more of a reason for you to hold off and like wait for a discount, wait for a sale, play it as like a free trial and then spend your money on it if you like it. You're going to have to wait for some of the big features anyway, so it doesn't really hurt you if you hold off. We're going to be the beta testers yet 
again because I know EA barely tests career mode. So half the game's success will be dependent if there aren't any crazy bugs or glitches upon release that will just ruin the launch experience and turn people off. This has probably been the biggest update to career since FIFA 21 or ever, to be honest. But it's like a poison chalice. The more new things they add, the more that could go wrong. So we're just gonna have to wait and see. And like every year, the sooner PC mods drop, the better. This could be the biggest year ever for mods in the career mode scene, considering how many new features and elements are added. I can't wait to see how the modding scene evolves this year. It is going to be hectic, and you'll see all that coverage right here. So keep it locked and loaded on the BCHD channel. You know where to find me, as we'll be having more coverage of FC25 on the lead up to launch day, and more fun content coming your way now that I'm back from Europe. So if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. I love you all. Drop a like and subscribe on the video. It really helps me out, as I've been your boy, Sir BCHD. I'll love you and leave you. Have a great day, and I'll catch you lot on the very next video. Bye-bye.